first of all um <laughs> alteryx is a tool which can you know caters around four requirements of you know any data analyst uh when i say four requirements so it starts from your uh, etl layer basically you can get your data from uh, different and various sources uh the second layer i would say like data crunching or maybe data mining wherein you can clean your data join your data create al uh, aggregations right that the second thing what you can do fourth thing would be around analytics so when i say analytics basically using statistical analysis algorithms or uh maybe if you if you want to do forecasting or a trend analysis all those things you can do uh the fifth thing would be the kind of pre presentation layer wherein uh, you can do some sort of visualization using the uh, alteryx right the visualization done in alteryx will not be as good as a uh, tab you can provide but again the kind of volume or the data or the feature alteryx offers tab you i mean it, it, there is no point basically comparing these tools but what i am saying in terms of visualization tab you is better Alteryx can provide you that, but the kind of feature Alteryx provides uh, in terms of data handling and doing analytics, they they are you know really really good, right? Now similarly going back to the products which are offered by Alteryx, similarly here you can see on my screen, uh, it's a Alteryx platform is consist of designer, server, connect, promote, and data set. so designer is basically similar and similar to a desktop application wherein you will be creating your workflows you will be creating your jobs you will be kind of you know playing with your data on your local machine but once that job is ready once you are ready with your cleaning stuff uh, in data right joining doing union or whatever calculation or algorithms you want to apply once you are ready you need to push that job to some server right so that you can run that thing uh, on periodic basis or a particular scheduled time so in order to do that you need to have a server requirement okay now the same concept here uh, like server alteryx server can also be hosted on prem as well as on cloud so when i say on cloud basically uh, a server credentials will be provided by alteryx itself you need not to have a separate setup for that you can have you know everything all your uh, workflows data sets promoted there uh, let's say if you are creating some custom connections custom connector you also need to you know you need to deploy that also on tableau server so that once your job is there on tableau server those connector connectors should work um again if you have set up everything on alter server right yes sorry 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 <laughs> server when i say server basically it is alter servers okay so i mean any server if you talk in the word there are two type of you know uh, features one is on uh, on cloud or another is on prem so on cloud will be again public uh, basically provided by the provider itself so it's exactly not the public thing but when we say public right it is like there is a same instance and different organization and people can access it and when we say on prem it is basically dedicated to one particular organization you understand that difference right yes sir yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay okay now again server is a place after you know, your designer's job is done you can place everything onto the server now connect why they have mentioned connect as a project, uh, product separately because alteryx provides you some native connectors right connectors means in order to get data from different sources you have some native connectors however there is some limitation because alteryx is not that uh, i would say new it has some limitations like uh, for example i can um, say azure like azure uh, you might have heard right you might have worked also no i just heard a bit <laughs> okay <laughs> right azure aws so these are basically the cloud uh, services provided by uh, different different vendors so aws is being provided by amazon uh, 
and uh, Azure is being provided by Microsoft. So uh, the limitation what I was talking about, AWS, because it is very old, when Altrex started, they provide almost connectivity to all the AWS components. So if you're using AWS, you can connect to all the components using Altrex. But uh, in Azure, because Azure was the, I would say the second cloud provider after AWS. So still there are few components like Azure uh, Blob Storage. So Blob Storage is basically a storage location provided by Microsoft in cloud. Uh, over there, let's say if you put some files, right? Altrex cannot connect that. That's a limitation there. They are still working. They have turnarounds. They have you know workarounds. Like you can use API connectors. Um, you can create some custom solutions, but the native connectivity is not there. Uh, they are working on it. I mean, if you go to their community and ideas, product ideas, so they have mentioned that they are working on it. It will come in right uh, in next one or two years. It will be available, but right now because it is new, so there are several uh, data sources wherein Altex cannot connect at this point of the time. Now promote is a promote is a, another mechanism which works like as a bridge through which you can kind of publish your designer or data connectors or data sets to server Altex server. Uh, then data set, data set is again similar to, you know, kind of, you know, data, physical data, which you can deploy over Altrix server. Now, why do we need to have a physical data? See, uh, if your data is dynamic, if it is changing, then it is not suggested that you create data set and then place it to the server. If it is your static data, right? Uh, can you code some static data scenario wherein you don't want data to change, but again, you want to use that? Uh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can have scenarios like that. Like, yeah, yeah. let's say, the country code or state scores, that, that is our change. Exactly. So, I mean, these might change, but it's very rarely like... Very rare. In, yeah. Right. It's very rare in 10 years or 5 years and once it will change. So that data, it is not, uh, you know, recommended that we can, we should create a live connection to these type of, you know, data sources, the data which is not even changing, right? So it's always yeah. advised for these scenarios, whether it is Tableau, whether it is Altrix, whether it is any solution you talk about, right? Yeah. The data which is not changing, you should always go with the static data set. But the data yeah. which changes, you should go with either, you know, very uh, kind of frequently refresh mechanism or you should give a live connectivity. So, yeah, yeah. having said that, will have better performance. Exactly. Yeah. See, not only it will give better performance, but also it will reduce traffic. It will reduce your resources cost, right? Yes. Right. And another thing, let's say uh, in your database, you have one table with a static data and other tables are very, you know, useful, confidential. But if you provide a live connection to that table, there is, you know, other hackers and all uh, risk is also there, right? Security risk. Yes. So I would not say like all the databases can be hacked, but again, by using this static data mechanism, we can reduce that issue. Okay. Now uh, I'll go to, uh, yeah, having said, uh, talk about all these products here, out of this training session, we are going to utilize designers because designer is the platform or the product which will help us to design jobs, right? I'll just click here. Okay, Altrix designer. So what it basically helps you with, it helps you to prepare your data, blend your data, do some visual analytics, do predictive analytics, Spatial data is also, you know, you can connect and do some analysis over here. And then you can create few other, you know, insights. Insights, when I say basically, you can run your models. A statistical modeling you can do, predictive modeling you can do. So those features are available in Designer. Uh, I'll just share this URL with you on chat. Okay, I'll, I'll share this URL with you so that you can download Al, uh, Altrix from here. Okay. 
you need to download this portion. This free trial for how many days? It? Yeah, it is for 14 days, right? It's a free trial for 14 days, but again, similar to Tableau, uh, you already have that student ID card, right? Yeah, yeah, I have that. Yeah, yeah. So they have, you know, similar kind of mechanism here also. You can submit your student ID card and they can provide at least one year's of, you know, license. So, <laughs> right, right. You can see here, if you're a student or educator, uh -huh. click here. But, but their process is a little different. The thing is, you need to send your information to, to them on their particular email address. They will validate and then they will, you know, kind of send you the license key. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Tableau was straightforward, like you can just upload it and you can get the key on your email. So a little different is there. Now another thing in order to know Tableau, sorry, Altrix better, uh, you need to know all these things here that what is the actual use. So you can explore that. I'm not going through these details, but yes, yeah. I would expect that if you can create your account to community and resources right yes. because these resources are again going to provide a lot of insights the new features which are which are coming into tab uh, altrix and then um basically in community you can discuss about a lot of topics so i'll just click here okay so they provide access to different blogs analytical blog engine work blog um alternation blog so different data science blog is there right but apart from that just see here community hub academics what are the learning paths in altrix interactive lessons videos weekly challenge then you have kind of discussions which are involved let's say there is some problem you can place your question here so they will provide the answer not basically altrix is not going to provide the answer it's a community people uh, like you like me who, who are you know very active uh, in Altrix community, they'll provide the answer. Then ideas are basically, you can recommend to Altrix that this is the feature what you need to have. This feature is not there. So the one which I was talking about, Azure Blob. So that is part of you know this idea segment only. So they have mentioned, they provided response that they are working on this particular ideas and very, very soon in future, they will have this feature enabled. Then user groups, so basically these are demographic specific uh, uh, groups, what they have created. Then use cases will have, uh, it will give you, you know, a lot of insight, like where all you can use Altrix, right? Then programs, uh, some of the programs they have and the support at least. So fine, I mean, this is what you can explore once you create your account, but this academic one will help you a lot, a lot uh, because it has, you know, learning path. Likewise, in Tableau, you have, you know, server admin and desktop admin, right? Yeah. In the same way, in Altrix also, you have like getting started, data science learning path and server admin. So this first two will basically focus on your designer part. And the third one is related to admin, like how can you manage groups? How can you uh, set uh, size, security and a role uh, you can apply it for to different people you can create groups who can get who can you know access a particular folder or not on server side so that type of things are there uh, similarly like tableau server you also need to have a proper control on server i mean it's any server i'm not talking about tableau server but it's any server uh, if server admin is able to manage properly then a lot of you know things remain secure as well as the sharing with the you know required people can be managed very well, right? So that is all theoretical part. You can cover that uh, going through this website. I'll go through the Altrix software or designer what I have on my system. So you can see I have the latest version, which is 2020.1 Altrix designer. And this is exactly what you also need to download in order to do um, as a developer. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. So as soon as you open Altrix the very first time, right, 
your screen will look like this, wherein uh, you will see different options like file menu, edit menu, view, options, and help. And then you will have a favorite tab, right? Under favorite tab, you might not have, you know, all these options. What happens? Like once you start using this uh, studio or designer, then the tools which you use very frequently, right? Alteryx adds them by default here. So that, I mean, it automatically identifies that these are the tools which you're using very frequently. So they will appear on the favorite tab. Okay. Then in and out tab, this tab is basically for your input and output data. So when I say input data, output data, basically we are talking about the ETL mechanism, like getting your data from data source and placing that into some destination which means, I mean, you can take the example like you are getting data from SQL and putting into some Excel file or getting data from one Excel file and combining that and putting into some text file. So those type of mechanisms, you can, uh, the controls related to those mechanism, you can get it here. So browse is basically, you know, it will show you that how your data looks like on the fly or maybe as soon as you drag the control, if you want to see the data that how your data looks like, you can use this browse control. So in different tabs, whether it is preparation, these are the controls related to your data preparation, like auto field. Auto field is used for changing the data types, create sample, data cleansing, filter, formula, right? Sorting is there. Then if you go to join tab, you will see join, union, fuzzy match, lookup, all those type of things. Parsing is there, right? Text to column, transform, in database. So Okay, what is the meaning of in database? No idea. Okay, uh, do you know um, in memory databases? Yes, like Hana. Yeah, so what, yeah, what, they, what they do? They do the calculation in the client side, in the, in the memory, and in the data, uh, in the data Time. Rather, wherever it is installed in that local memory, local RAM, uh, they use that hardware and do the right so what i got actually your voice is not very clear but what i figured it out you are saying that uh, these databases work in in memory or the on the local system and do the data calculation or uh, some tasks right yes in the same way as soon as you install altrix on your system altrix also has some inbuilt data, in -built data uh, data sources right so if you want, you can specifically call out these objects and utilize this. If you don't do that, what Altrix does while doing the transformation or doing some calculation, Altrix automatically you know, utilizes any of those and do that you know, random kind of you know, calculation or whatever calculation basically you have implemented in the workflow. So it utilizes these things, but if you want to kind of specify that, yes, I want to use this component, Altrix will do that, right? So basically this mechanism or this feature makes any job to run faster. Now, uh, two things, okay. So I, there, uh, and there, there is some limitation, right, to in memory calculation, right? It can process uh, heavy volume of data. No, no, so see. Does that apply to? Yeah, yeah, basically because it is on your local system, it will utilize your system's resources, right? So whatever memory you have on your system, whatever you know RAM you have on your system, it will utilize that only. If that is limited, this will also be limited. Correct. And yeah. actually, I was yeah, I was coming to that point only when I said two things. Uh, you can have you know, I mean, Altrix offers this server thing, right? Yeah. My question is, do we really need server? Uh, for a particular task or for a particular job? Not necessarily, but uh, we, we can't have a highly configured device right in our local system. So uh, Correct. maybe the server will be highly tuned and uh, the resources, the capability limit will be more. Exactly. So exactly. We can make your job. 
Yes. So let's say you're you have a machine of you know high configuration, maybe um, let's say 32 or 64 GB of RAM, and then 10 or you know 15 TB of you know hard drive. Then maybe you can use your system as a server, right? You don't need any electric mm -hmm. server, any electric server or separate server to deploy your jobs. But generally, the system, the development system or say machines, what we use, we will have hardly 16 GB of RAM, or normally we get 8 or 4 GB RAM only, right? Mm -hmm. Because the RAM is limited here. We cannot run all the jobs on these machines. We can do, uh, we can create, we can test, but in order to final deployment, we need to have this on a particular server. And for that, we really need to have a kind of, you know, electric server or any server wherein we can deploy these jobs. So mm -hmm. uh, if you will if you'll deploy your job on a particular server, then definitely, you know, system is going to use those resources and do the calculation. But until by the time it is on your local, you need to have a better configuration or utilize any of these. Okay. okay. So it is not always that it is in memory calculation. Whenever you do it in local, then it is in memory. Or right. whenever, uh, okay. Uh, let's say we have a server configuration, but still the volume is very less, which we think can be uh, easily handled in our local system, in our mm -hmm. in memory. So is there a way we can execute it in our local system? Yeah, yeah. See, see what happens once you create a job, right? You need to create a, a file, a deployable fi file. And what that deployable file can be called out by, um, you know, batch jobs. B A T C H batch jobs, right? Yes. So in system, uh, let me just show you. Uh, sorry, not here. On your system, you will have. We generally get accessibility options, right? Which one? Accessibility options on your system. Okay, accessibility options, yes. Yes, yes. So under that, you will have schedule job option. Okay, task scheduler, it was there. Under this, right? It says create a basic task or create a task. So what you need to do is you need to create a batch job in dot bat file you will mention this particular workflow or the job which you are creating and then you need to refer that batch job here whatever time schedule what you mention here at that particular time this job will run so not only this altrix right you can schedule your ssis jobs also using this we schedule you know number of jobs so either you go for server or if you're doing it on local, you can utilize this. Both options will always be there. Okay, I never used this actually. I, I didn't know what, uh, what is this part. Okay, I mean, uh, bad, this schedule job, see even IT people, uh, IT infra people, uh, whatever, you know, system updates they send. You can see here, right? Yeah. Okay. These are the system updates only. Okay, yes. yes. Okay, but so using satellite? Exactly. So what they do, they schedule it for, you know, uh, uh, they schedule it for the complete uh, Active Directory. So anybody uh -huh. who's connected, who's part of that Active Directory, automatically that gets, that thing gets pushed into all the systems. Yes. Okay. So from here only you can create jobs and uh, automatically, see, I can show you uh, if you want, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a different. It's different than yes, the basic thing actually. I have seen this option multiple times in the system, mm -hmm. but never mm -hmm. knew what is this for actually. See, if you click on create task, you can give any name, test, mm -hmm. and uh, it has conf uh, details like who, who, who you want to run this. So, right now it is my system name. So which means it will be located on the system only. But mm -hmm. if it is server, you can provide access to multiple people. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says right users group or built in security principles. And you are selecting the option run only when user is logged in. Or do you want to run when user is logged or not? Okay, so both features are there. 
now if you do it you can go to triggers over here you can assign a trigger that what type of job it is when you want to trigger it basically so generally you can say on schedule or you can select any other things and what time daily weekly monthly what time you want to run this that thing you can set up uh, then what action you want it to perform so that action will be basically start a program send an email display a message any of these things and let's say if you're creating a batch job you can simply browse that batch job and it will auto execute by the time what you have set into triggers okay if you want to define yeah. some conditions you can do those conditions here settings mm -hmm. and run your job so yeah, but it will not be that flexible like the third party setting up things right but limited obviously, obviously it is on your local system right so <laughs> server can provide you a lot of uh, you know flexibility control security many things it is on your local it is dependent or constrained by the you know system resources so those constraints will be there right because it is on your local machine but uh, because server has those that that is meant for that only they have provided those flexibility scalability and uh, security so it is always advisable to go for server but it because server comes up with cost also <laughs> right so if your budget and cost allows then only you should go for that otherwise you can plan maybe some uh, a virtual machine you can plan with good configuration and you can deploy these jobs there okay but let's say uh, like my system my hcb run if i just extend it by 16 gb then it is sufficient right at least per run uh, 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 Spriti, your voice is coming up with a lot of you know echo sound, so uh, it's very mm -hmm. hard to identify words. What yeah, so, like, yeah, I was asking like let's say currently my system which I am using it is a GB RAM system. If I just extend by eight more GB, if I make it sixteen GB, then uh, and if I install the student version of Android, then it is sufficient for learning. Okay, so you are asking like uh, if you can scale uh, the memory and uh, uh, yeah, storage for your system by extending RAM and all. Yeah, yes. you would be able to run it. Yeah, you would be able to run it. So 8 GB is fine or uh, 16 GB? 8 GB RAM is for Altrix it is fine. I mean for creating job it is fine. But again, uh, let's say you, you are connecting to huge data, right? Yeah. Then the things like sorting and all, they might not work properly. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, you you will get some constraint uh, if you are connecting to huge data. But if you are connecting to very low data or small files, then you will not have any problem. You can use use it with it 8, 8 GB. And with the student person, we'll be configuring it in local environment. Uh, studio. I mean, you mean this designer tool? Yeah, this designer tool. Yeah, I mean there is no configuration required for it. You just need to kind of download uh, mm -hmm. from the Altrix site and just install it. It's a simple installation process. Yeah, I can see it. OK, OK. So we were talking about in, uh, in database components. Um, then if I move further to the next tab, which was report related to reporting. So as we already said that Altrix does provide some type of you know, reporting, but it is not that extensive. So over here, you know, the tab, uh, table format is there. Report text is there wherein you can, you know, kind of put comments into the report and create a kind of. Going back to documentation, it's again, uh, as it says, documentation. So you can put comments and all. All, the, all those things are kind of, you know, possible once you uh, start working on the reporting side. But yes, uh, looking at the components, you can see like it is not much used. Uh, spatial is again related to th different options. What you can see, these are different than uh, the analysis what we do in W. These options are different. Spatial analysis of data. Then interfaces are there. You can create form and all in your, uh, let's say if you want to do yeah, yeah. some report. So what I was saying, uh, yeah, this particular tab, 
let's say if you want to create some kind of you know interface or a gui version of your reports right or workflows so you can utilize this right it's not much with uh, your kind of you know data ethical thing these are the extended features what i would explore data investigation you can see like basic data profiling okay what is the meaning of data profiling data profiling My, means uh, uh, like uh, cleansing the data and making it uh, ready for the models to consume directly without without this right. layers kind of thing and mapping and outlier and all that so let's say there is a data sample out of which there is one column which has a lot of you know blank and null values so what would you do so that is not a good sample actually so what to, i mean we can clean it and see we can uh, fill in the blanks or we can discard the outliers okay fine 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 so similar to that uh, basically feed summary pearson correlation so these are the different algorithms if you you can read out about these things pearson correlation and spearman correlation these are the concepts in statistics right correlation theory if you look for you will get the details related to these both spearman and pearson correlation then predictive modeling it provides these controls deploy score prescriptive you have again further uh, controls but uh, right now you can see hardly one or two controls here right it's in the trial version if you go for a paid one or the full version you will have a lot many you know uh, controls in these tabs in total altex provides you know more than 200 controls which can be used by uh, developer or while creation of these jobs okay now if i talk about the layout of the screen here so you can see uh, first of all in this panel what you see at far left over here you do a lot of configuration work configuration work related to this, these different components what you, what you see at the top you can you know bring those components it's a complete drag and drop right so you can drag it here and then you can see like whatever component you drag accordingly this screen will change then you need to do the configuration of this and whatever configuration you provide accordingly you will see some more options now i'll just delete this this portion is kind of wherein you drag or create your workflow so workflow is creating workflow is very easy you can just drag components join two components into one right so this is how altex provides the flexibility that you can join multiple components also with one component so like joining looking at this data at different levels that all you can do then the last pane over here you can see the area which is related to you can say results or logs basically so let's say there is some error you will see logs like this if there is no error your uh, task ran successfully then you will see uh, results over there so these features it provides you have different you know tabs all here if you see the result you can export that in form of you know csv file or excel file so those features are also there now going back here at the top edit view options so out of this options and help these two tabs i would say at being it the first day i would request you to kind of you know explore these two things very well uh under options you have different op uh, functions to kind of run your workflow you can go through different analytical apps what you create manage your licenses so once you get your student license you can come here and put that and activate your altrix promote connection manage connection like uh, let's say you want to publish your workflow or job to some server that you can manage from here 
and similarly in db connections you can manage from later these options so just go through all these things you'll get to know more help is again the same website which i was talking about altrix helps tutorials sample work uh, workflows i'll come to this again in few minutes community is the same web page what is new so tab uh, sorry altrix people will give give you or keep you posted with their latest additions or the new features what they add you can download further things from altrix website from here now let's go to this sample workbooks okay you can see the same option at the top also okay on each control as soon as you put your mouse you can see open example right that's one way of kind of going to the samples or examples in case you want to see the complete job just follow or go to help see workflow samples and over here also the same thing related to different components you can see examples so in and out tab browse and these are the input data so this was the input data control open example same thing you can get from help and then go to sorry sample workbooks in and out and then input data as soon as you click you see some sample here uh, let me increase so you can see details related to this like where you are going to use this okay so for example I have selected the top one which says data connections. So here you can see they might have connected one database. It's not very clear right now, but if you select this one Excel file, you can see there is a location for one Excel file, the metadata of that Excel sheet, and then the fields inside that Excel sheet. You can explore. Right? Why I can see this Excel sheet here? Because this Excel sheet will be one of the sample file provided by Altrix while installation. So it's, it takes a lot of time while in the installation because it provides a lot of material also. Now, how can you see that material? Let me copy this location. We can go to the user app data. So C drive users app data. Then you have local and inside that you have Altrix. So this is similar to W. While installation of Altrix, it also creates the whole repository over here. Over here you can have APIs. What is API by the way? This is uh, like full form is application uh, program interface where uh, we can expose some data in the UI. Sometimes are our own JSON. Right, right, right. So see what happens in application basically while let's say you are developing an application. So over there, uh, there are two ways you can get data into your application. One is you can create a direct connection with your database, right? That will not be secure because you will every time you will hit your database using their credentials. So it is not that secure because you are using credentials in the application. So the advisable way is to create APIs, REST APIs or serverless APIs. Basically, these APIs will form a kind of URL. And through that, you can access or connect to any database and fetch the required amount of data, required fields, all that. So you can, you know, for example, I took a, uh, Azure Blob. You cannot directly connect to Azure Blob using Altrix. In that case, you can use Azure APIs 
to get data from Azure Blob and show into tab, uh, tab Altrix. So that's a kind of you know flexibility, which means you can do some customization. Auto save is like you created. It's as simple as it says. Uh, let's say you created some workflows, and uh, if you enable auto save, automatically those will save here, so that you don't lose your job or don't lose your workflow if your system restarts immediately. So it's always advisable to use auto save option. Bin is kind of where you have all the DLLs supporting file which are installed. So you can see here runtime data, Python Conda, plugins, mini Conda 3. So all these things are used by Altrix in backend. Okay. So over here, I think you can, if you know Python, you can do a lot of you know, changes. See, Python files are also there, batch files are there, and the number of Jupyter files. What is Jupyter workbook, notebook? It is an editor actually, which is provided by uh, Anaconda distribution for Python and other applications. Okay. And then you have, you know, sample data. So one tool data inside that you will have a lot of sample data formats available. Now over here, again, you can see some of them are PNG files. Then you have Excel files. And if I talk about these files, right? These are again data files or database files specific to Altrix. Like whenever we connect to Altrix, Altrix creates a replica of your data. It's a physical, physical replica what Altrix creates and saves into uh, your local system. So it makes you know any job faster while working using Altrix. Yeah. It's a similar to similar kind of concept as data extract we have in Tableau. Similar kind of concept that Altex creates a replica of the data in local system. Now going back, sample data which is being used here and all these things you can explore. It's nothing but similar data. What is what comes as soon as you install? Setting will have. All of these are related to maps here, but maps can be used in reporting. So again, while doing data preparation and ETL will not be using this much. Okay. So for Excel, okay, now let's, let's go ahead and kind of see one workflow. We'll go to help. Normalized data. So this is one of the fine example. If you see here, it's a sample Altrix workflow, which is using, first of all, input data component. Then it is parsing that. It's browsing that and many other operations, what it is utilizing in order to create the final output here. Final output is what? It's using this component text to column basically that you can also see. So uh, it's basically applying number of operations on the same data. Okay, now I'll close this, we'll do a small exercise. Okay, I'll just drag input data. And as soon as I do input data, you can see connect a file or database. Over here, you as soon as you click on this small drop down, you see this pop up window, which allows you to connect to different type of you know files or data sources. So recent one is like this, what I have just connected earlier, saved right now, nothing is saved with me, but again, over here, you can see these are the different connections or connection types, what Altex provides. All of these are kind of file based systems. Fine. Yeah, this is huge actually. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> right. 
then if you move towards data source it provides first of all they have segregated odbc or uh, oracle type of uh, sql or oracle type of you know data sources it says frequently used data source because if you go by you know sql and oracle these are the primary databases used by many organizations then all other data sources basically adobe amazon then you have databricks databricks is nothing but it is part of your azure database azure cloud google analytics ibm products and microsoft okay so we can connect so, to hive and impala as well in this yes yes so hive sat hana is the goes hive yeah impala then i saw hive somewhere yeah okay okay but yes if you look at it if you look at any of these connections right they have used only this mechanism OLDB, ODBC, or uh, these things only. See, uh, because these are the native things, right? You can mm -hmm. cu customize that and create your own presentation layer for these connections. But ultimately, this is the basic connectivity what these tools provide, or these you know, or these mode of connections provide. Uh, you can connect to any data source using these two. So that's why, uh, as we have raised, you know, people have raised that. Azure data block connectivity is not there. They started working on Azure. Some of the tools they have already provided. You can see Microsoft Azure Data Link, Microsoft Azure Data Warehouse, but Blob they are still working on. Blob is not there. SQL Data Source. Okay, if you have a file in OneDrive, you can connect to that. So for now, I'll just go and connect to file. You can directly drag that file here or I'll just say browse and we'll go to desktop. Let's connect this only what we used earlier. Okay, as soon as I selected that file, it says select a sheet. So being an Excel file, there would be multiple sheets. I can refer back that what sheet I want to select. And again, this is the option what you get only with Excel sheet right now. If you select any other data type or data source, you will not get this. Then range. In one sheet itself, you can define a range that you want to select only this portion of data. It will not select the complete sheet, okay? So I will uncheck that, but over here, let's say okay, this option is not enabled here, but what is named range? Do you know? The second option which says select a named range. What is named range? Maybe the header names from this header name to that header name. No, no, no. Basically, named range is uh, because we are connected to Excel, right? In Excel, in Excel, you can name a particular range. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me go ahead and tell you. See, right now, if you look at the complete data, this is my data which is starting from. Column A2, column A1 to uh, AD and row number 1002. Okay. Over here, I don't see anything. It simply says A1 right now. But, but what the possibility is, let's say, I select this range and I say my range. Okay. I removed, I'm not doing anything now. I just selected some random cell. I'll go here, I'll see my range. As soon as I select this, my old range is selected automatically. Yes. Okay. So to this particular range, what I selected and given a name as my range, that will appear here in this named range once 
I think it is because it is trial version of Alteryx. Yeah. So that's why it is not. I mean, either I can save this Excel sheet, then I would see, or I'm not very sure that it is because it is a trial version. It will not give all the features, right? So I need to check that. But yes, because of that, it is not appearing here. And generally, you know, see Excel, we hardly connect for with Alteryx. It's a very rare. Yeah. yeah. So, but name range is that. Now import only the list of sheet names. So over here, you are selecting a particular sheet. In case you have multiple sheets, you can just only get the sheet names. You don't want to get the data. You only want to get the sheet names. So these options are there for Excel. Similarly, for each, each native connectors, you can go and look for different options. I'll say OK. And now you can see here, sheet one is selected. Sheet one, search for subdirectories. I don't have any directory in this situation. First row contains data. But in my case, first row contains records, uh, sorry, headers. So I will not, yeah, I will not check this. And then sample data import on line one, right? Okay, let me refresh. It should be from line two, right? Yes, yes. What is the sheet? Opening this can't access. Okay, right now that Excel sheet is open. Yes. Open. Okay. Let me bring this. Let me close. Refresh. Now you can see your data appears here. Fine. It has headers as field one, field two, field three. Actually, it's the same data what I was using earlier. Let me change this because files, select file. Now you will see the proper headers. Yeah. And see, by default, I mean, as soon as I clicked here, the error went away. Otherwise, you could have clicked on run this, run. It will show you that what exactly it has processed. So that also you can see. Now, it's just the connection right now. I have not done anything. It is the only connection we have made to that file. And over here, you can see like these many records have been successfully processed. Last configuration, if you click here, you can see that file. Okay. In case of database, it will not be allowed. But over here, you can see that. Now, I can't see the, those records until unless I click on this icon, this arrow icon. I don't see that data here in the result pane. Okay, so what is happening in each control as soon as, as soon as you drag that control here on this screen, either you can click on this sign to see the data, what data it is processing or you can use this browse icon or browse control and as soon as you run, you will be able to see the data automatically. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Now, as soon as you so drag this, this browse uh, tool, we can connect uh, any intermediate state right? during uh, our workflow. Let's say just to check how the data is transforming in the middle, like we no. keep our debug box. No, no. So there are two things. This browse option is mostly added at the last point where you want to see the results okay but what you are telling that in like debug and all you want to see the data status for that you can simply click on this arrow sign right it will show you that data 
Okay. So with any so control. This arrow will be available with all the transformations. Yeah, yeah, with all the controls. So for example, let's say I drag this sorting one. Right? Right now it is not configured, so that's why it is giving error. I need to select this. I'll go here, I can select my fields. How I want to sort, uh, let me select city, ascending or descending, I can choose that. And then if you come here, I need to run first of all. Let me remove this so that we should not get confused. Okay. So now you can see until and I don't click on this arrow, this data will not appear. Okay, I clicked on this arrow, this data appeared here. But if you use browse, browse will automatically yeah, as soon as you will select, automatically it will show you that data at the end. For this browse, you will not get arrow. Right? And that's the reason it is added in the last only in the end of any flow. Right? Browse will not come in between. Now, this was the one of the scenario when we just uh, kind of added to one of the data source, sorted that out and looked at the browse result. Now, let's say I need to create output or maybe I, I have, let's say one more file I want to connect with and do some kind of joining criteria or I want to do some joins. So for that, I will have to drag one more input data. I can connect to some other file. It's the first one. It's a people. Now here you can see region, people, okay, people name are there. Okay. Or you have north, south, east, central region. Uh, let me kind of add joins. I'll bring a join component. We'll join to this and we can join our original data to this component. Okay, so there are two flows, right? One flow is our original flow wherein we are just sorting our data and browsing it. We are looking at the results. The next one is like I want to join these two. My input data one and input data two. I'm going to join these two sources into one. And once you click here, it will give you the similar screen wherein you can configure this join. That what type of join on which fields you want to apply this join. So for that, for left, I will let's say select region. And in second, second is basically this one. We already had in a region here. Region field, you can just go. Yeah, this is the region. Sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So basis region I have just joined. And whatever result is going to come, you can get that as an output or maybe browse that further. So I'll just drag it here and so okay on this control you can see left, right, left, right, and join. Okay, so which arrow, whichever arrow you are connecting this browse to, only that data will appear. If you are connecting to L, L to this browse, so only left table will appear, that is, that is top one. If you are connecting to R, right side, so this right data will appear. But if you just click on join, it will show you the complete join result. Okay, we need to just run this package. I'll click here and you can see the results related to this particular join. Okay, I'm not going up to the field level right now, the comparison, but over here you can see the first two columns are coming from the left table, region and people. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the columns are coming from the second table. So you might have region again. But that was not configured anywhere, right? Yeah, exactly. 
so that that we can you know maybe play later on but yes those options will be there like what you want to control what you don't want to control so those things can be done exactly join types and all can select yeah join type is here only right see okay left right and simply join so these things are here now here join by record position and join by the field position so these things are also there some options are there which you can play with and uh, as soon as you do it you will know more now let me just remove this browse from here and we'll say output data and this time i want to kind of configure this output component we'll go here files select a file and let me create one file here excel based file we'll say results we'll say save i don't want to specify any cell or uh, range which is simple okay sheet 1 okay skip the field names no i don't want to skip i want field names and we'll simply run this we'll say run okay so it ran but it gave me some error fine see here join six these many records were joined with one unjoined left record and these many unjoined right records right this error is related to join so that we can you know handle post uh, join and all was we talked it talk in detail about joins it's related to join only for now for output what i would say let me directly after sorting i'll just add it to this and we'll run this job so what it says one error sheet already exists okay that's fine so what we need to do is sheet already exists so we can either overwrite that sheet or append the data okay so here let's see if fields are there none fields are there okay the ivo option i think okay and then option number 3 option number 3 which one output options it is okay create okay. okay 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 fine append so yeah it's here i would say append to existing sheet i don't want to kind of overwrite yeah. it let's run this again no it's giving uh, okay unable to append entire empty sheet or range fine or else we can just create or write see the problem you know why why it happened the reason being in our excel sheet we don't have any header we don't have any range we just selected the sheet so that's okay. why either we would have headers we could have mapped it see we don't get any kind of mapping here that's why it is creating a problem so this need to be settled properly or overwrite the file let's see yeah. so now this has created a new file into the same location every time we run it it's going to create a new file but yes we will we need to go through those options also right yeah. because it it will not be a kind of requirement that every time you need to overwrite a file or delete your file right that's not a logical thing so you yeah. we need to you know know how to append uh, the data see once this file is uh, deleted now what i can do is i just go here if you see now i have got the mapping yes right we can say append into existing sheet and we'll run it again 
let's see what happens time it will done okay so earlier because the mapping was not there metadata was not defined properly so that's why this job was kind of failing but now as of now we have done it so the good thing is like metadata is clear to this particular job and altrix can identify and put the data into required pipelines okay now similarly uh, there are other options like text input any idea what will it do the last users yeah so basically you can define your data here itself for example okay. let's say i go ahead and put some table let's let me say column one or let's say say name i can put some name john then i can put address okay so you can create your own data here or let's say if you have a data you can copy paste that here and then okay. this data can be further joined or appended or maybe union so you, this is the union option so you can do all those operations here by the yeah. data by creating that data here. so we were talking about the static data right for those type of scenarios like let's say you don't have any actual data source and every time you get your data into static files for that you can maybe utilize this section okay then text to column you must be aware that what it is yeah okay so fine uh your uh, L ltx got installed right yeah that's it just check it if it is working fine any issue okay 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 fine so tomorrow uh, in our session what we will do we will try to kind of you know go with all these options uh, for input output and directory all these options which are under input output tab so basically for designer you really need to know all these options very well okay now there is one scenario which i am giving scenario which i am giving you right now uh let's say there is a folder okay uh let's say at this particular location only i have eu superstore i have superstore um let me create a copy okay now out of these four files what is changing just the name data might still be the same which is inside Yes. Right. Now try to search for a technique that by using one input data control, this one, you should be able to get data from all the sheets inside these files into one maybe consolidated file. Right. I'll repeat my question. I don't want to connect to individual files here. using just one input data control i want to get data from all the files and dump it into one file you got the question right yeah okay so just do some research about it create your account into community site yeah. and uh, tomorrow we'll go further again on it okay yeah. so In any question before you drop? No, I will follow the steps. I will check how I can get the student lessons. I think okay. it takes some time. Yeah, and then I will try to find some answer for this. Sure. 